Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Meister Class 76 sewing machine. Uh, this was also sold under the Viking badge. Um, however, those familiar with Viking should know this is not a Viking Teresa model. Um, more information will be in the description below. I also wanted to mention uh, first off that a copy of the manual is available um, on the European Sewing Machines Facebook group. I'll leave a link to that below as well. Uh, you will need to be a group member in order to access the files and download it, but it has been scanned in in its uh, entirety uh, for those who need it. Okay, so let's get started real quickly. Um, I'll talk about what's on the machine first, uh, then we'll wind a bobbin, thread it up, do some stitching. Um, okay, so let's start here. Up here you have the bobbin winder mechanism. So the right you have the hand wheel. In the center you have the uh, clutch to declutch the sewing mechanism. We have two spool pins, so you can use twin needles if you would like to. Um, we've got a thread guide in the rear and a thread guide up front. Your take-up arm or lever, depending on where you are in the world. Um, another thread guide. Your tension unit. Your stitch selection dial. Your stitch length selection dial. Reverse lever. Feed dog drop. This, ra this raises and lowers the feed. Um, coming down, you have another thread guide. Um, the, this machine uses high shank um, feet, which are readily available online. You can also buy a high shank snap-on adapter to use uh, snap-on feet. It's got a nifty little uh, folding table, kind of similar to the featherweight. This door is used to access the bobbin in the bobbin case, which is in here. Down here you have a nice place to store all of your accessories and bobbins. It's a pull-out drawer. Uh, this machine, I believe, is complete or very nearly complete uh, as it came from the factory. And, uh, of course, you've got your cord and your plug over here. And the foot pedal is here. And uh, this one's designed where you can unplug it. Uh, for easy portability um, and it all fits in this nice uh, red and black plaid case um, back here. I was fortunate enough to even get the keys with this one. Um, so it's a really neat machine and it's nearly complete. Okay, so let's wind a bobbin. I'm not going to wind a full bobbin because I already have one in the machine, but um, I'm going to demonstrate. First, you want to declutch the sewing mechanism. You do that by holding the outside of the hand wheel while turning the inside knob counterclockwise. That stops the machine from sewing while you wind a bobbin. Um, if you wish, you can always wind a bobbin while you sew, but if you're not going to be sewing, it's best to deactivate the sewing mechanism. All right, so let's start by taking the thread from the spool to the first thread guide, which I've already done. We're gonna wrap it around the bobbin winder tensioner, which is right here. Just one wrap. Take the end of the string, place it through any hole in the bobbin, doesn't matter what side of the bobbin. Then you're gonna line up this notch with the notch on the bobbin winder until it's fully seated. Then you'll move the bobbin winder over from left to right and press your foot pedal. As I said, I won't wind a full bobbin, um, but it, it does eventually stop when it rubs up against this piece and that's how you know your bobbin is full and ready to go. Now let's talk about how to place your bobbin into your bobbin case. So I'm going to remove the bobbin case by pulling on the tab and pulling it straight out. We're going to use this other bobbin that I've already wound. 
Uh, you want the inside of the bobbin case facing you. You want your thread coming off the top right of your bobbin. You'll place your bobbin into your bobbin case. Find the little notch for the thread. Take it through and around and up until it lands into the U-shape right here. That means you're ready to go. Then you're going to pull your lever again, holding it. You're going to place it over the shaft in inside of the bobbin area with the finger on the bobbin case at about 12 o'clock. You're going to push it in firmly until it snaps and give it a little tug to make sure it's in there firmly. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and thread the machine. So just take the thread out of the bobbin winder, leaving it in the first thread guide. Then you want to go around to the second thread guide. You'll come making sure your presser foot is up first. Come through the, bob the tension unit from left to right, going straight up to your take up lever or arm. Then you're going to take it from the take up lever down to the next thread guide, which is next to the tension unit. And then the following thread guide right here. And then you've got one more thread guide right above the needle. Let's see if that's better. And you're going to thread either one. There's two of them. There's one on the left and one on the right. Uh, doesn't matter which one. While I'm here, let's talk about needles. This machine uses a standard needle. Uh, you can find it at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, or Joann's. Um, the flat side of the needle, you see there's a rounded and a flat side. I hope you can see that. Uh, the flat side of the needle always goes to the back of the machine. If you install it wrong, it will give you stitch problems. So make sure to install with the flat side going to the back of the machine. You're going to place the needle all the way up into the needle bar. And once it's all the way up, uh, tighten it down. And this needle threads from the front to the back. Okay, now that we have the needle threaded, we're going to go ahead and bring up the bottom thread from the bobbin case. We're going to do that by grabbing the hand wheel, turning it towards us, which is counterclockwise. We want the needle to go all the way down and all the way back up again. Then we're going to give it a tug. And the loop that you see that pops up is going to be the bottom thread. So let's take our threads, place them through the foot and to the back, and we're ready to do to do next is I'm going to create a stitch sample using all of the stitches here except maybe this decorative stitch. We'll try it uh, but it may get caught under the foot and I don't feel like changing the foot out for the decorative stitch. Um, but let's get started with the stitch sample. So the first thing I'm going to do is a straight stitch. Uh, the stitch at the uh, 12 o'clock position or top center is going to be the one you have selected. I'm going to start out with the straight stitch, uh, five millimeters in length, then we'll move down to two and a half millimeters. We'll use the reverse and we'll do each stitch one by one. And then when I'm finished, I'll show the camera how the stitches turned out front and back. I'm going to use um, this fabric's probably kind of somewhere between a medium and a lightweight cotton. It's definitely thicker than quilting cotton, um, but thinner than what I would call medium fabric anyway. So let's get started. Um, place the fabric under the foot, drop the foot. Um, what I like to do uh, for better speed control is I like to place my needle down into the fabric before I start sewing. Um, that allows better speed control from the machine. Um, I'm also going to be holding my thread tails. Let's go. Going in reverse here and forward again. And I should apologize, the table this machine is on is bouncy. It, um, this is a lid and underneath it is a hollow center for a sewing machine that pops up. Uh, so just, if it's bouncing around a bit, know that it's not the machine. The machine is actually uh, very smooth, quiet, and pretty fast for 
a machine of this type. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the smaller stitch, uh, two and a half. And this time I'm going to go full speed just so you can see it. And once you get used to a machine, um, you can put the needle down just using your foot. I don't use this machine too often, so uh, it may take me a little bit to get it right. Okay, so now we've got the straight stitches out of the way. Let's go ahead and move on. So what I want you to know about the, these two red stitches is they're intended for buttonhole and zigzag width. So your zigzag widths are narrow, medium, and wide. But these two red ones are also used in the buttonhole function on the machine. So let's go ahead and do the narrow one. Uh, we're going to go down to stitch length two for that. And we'll do the medium. Let's move on to the wide. And when you're changing stitches, try to make sure your needle's not in the fabric. Um, that can bend your needle and you don't want your needle to be bent. I'm not really giving you a gu guys a good idea of the speed control that's available on this machine. Um, I'll try and do that after we're finished with the stitches. It's, it's got pretty good speed control for vintage machine. It's actually very light in the mechanisms um, and it allows it to move well. This is the fixed stitch for the buttonhole. Um, you can also use it, I believe, for the left needle position. Let's try that now. I actually haven't tried it, um, but let's go ahead and see if that's true. It is in the left position. Let's see if it sews that way. Yep, so um, this buttonhole fixed stitch can also be used as a left uh, homing needle position. Uh, the standard needle position here is in the center of the foot. So it looks like you can adjust the needle position either to the center or to the left. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to skip the decorative stitch for now. We'll do that last in case it jams under the foot. Um, the, the reason it might jam is because you need an embroidery style uh, or satin stitch foot on the machine um, before you build your thread up that high so that it can pass through. So next, uh, let's see, I believe this is a joining stitch. Don't quote me on that. So we're going to go back down to stitch length two. I'm going to slow a bit slower so you guys can see that it will sew nice and slow, a little faster, a little faster still, faster, faster, full speed. Okay, and this I believe is your blind hem stitch. Yep. And just so you know, the camera is literally right on top of the sewing machine and I'm right behind the camera. So if anything seems out of the ordinary loud, I assure you it's not the sewing machine. It is because of the proximity of the microphone to the sewing machine. Um, I actually really like this machine. Um, it's pretty quiet. It's really well built. It sews very well. So we're going to do the uh, triple stitch zigzag. Some people call it the tricot stitch. Um, some people call it the multi-point zigzag. Anyhow, it's really great for securing stuff. 
Um, so let's go. And as you can see, if you take your time and guide the fabric, it sews very straight. Um, I've not done the best job of that during this demonstration, but uh, it does feed very straight too. Another reason to love it. And in case you guys don't know, I'm a collector. Um, I'm really trying to get my collection down. So before I let this one go, that's why I'm making the video. So if I sound a little uh, obsessed with sewing machines, this is just the truth. So let's try that decorative stitch and see what it does. It's coming out great there. I'm going to try and bring it down a little bit more for a satin stitch. Excellent. Didn't even have to change the foot. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these stitches. Let's evaluate them. See if they have good tension. So the first thing I want you to notice is that there is no puckering. This is not a very heavyweight fabric. Now there are some wrinkles down at the bottom. I should have ironed my sample first, but um, so working from the bottom, uh, you've got your decorative stitch, and you'll notice I started out longer on the right. Gosh, I hope that's focused. And it's shorter on the left for a satin stitch. Then we've got your uh, multi-point zigzag, your blind hem, uh, your joining stitch. I believe I should have made that shorter, but it's either for joining two pieces of fabric, or you could also use it for attaching something that's elastic. Um, we've got a, a left needle position, 2.5 millimeter stitch. We have the widest zigzag, the medium zigzag, the narrow zigzag, uh, the center needle position 2.5 millimeter stitch, and then uh, the top one is the 5 millimeter long uh, straight stitch. And let's take a look at the back. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but to me the back looks as good as the front is. It looks like the tension is pretty much perfectly balanced, so I'm really happy with that stitch sample. Okay, I'm out of video time, so I'm going to have to do jeans next. So as many people know, vintage machines are good for sewing heavy material, um, so I'm going to demonstrate that here. Um, this might be a bit excessive, but uh, it's kind of the standard demo people do. So I've got eight layers of Wrangler blue jean denim um, and place it under the foot. Let's go ahead and do a long straight stitch. I'm going to place the hold the thread and place the needle down into the fabric. And I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch too. Okay, let's take a look at that, see if our tension's good, how the stitches came out. So on the bottom you have the five millimeter straight stitch and above that you have the widest zigzag setting also at five millimeters and on the back uh, looks like the stitches came out really well except for that last one which might be from me pulling it out of the machine anyhow it can handle a uh, heavier material like most vintage machines